Genesis chapter 6, verse 18. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. The reading of the word of God for the people of God. You can take your seat. And so we are yet in the year theme, the entire year theme, kingdom worshipers, kingdom worshipers. All of Shekinah should be aiming to be more of a kingdom worshiper. Amen. As we go along, kingdom worshipers. Today we begin a new series, a new series entitled Covenants. Covenants. And today I want to minister from the sermon topic, Why Noah? And this is from the Noahic Covenant, Sermon 1. It already tells you it's a Sermon 2 under Noah. <laughs> Why Noah? Hmm. I begin. Well, today we begin the series Covenants. God has placed on my heart that we need to truly understand the provision of a covenant, the prophetic leanings of a covenant, the power of the covenant, and the personal responsibility of the covenant. I find that we live in a world of people who are so independent except when it comes to who should take responsibility for mistakes. That's when we are not independent, but we place the power of a wrong outcome on another person. When we speak of biblical covenant, this is a perfect God stepping into an imperfect world and making an agreement with a faulty mankind. A covenant is God coming in agreement with himself and reaching out to mankind in contractual form. And that is, God lets us know what our life will be like if and when we agree with him concerning everything. How many of you know it's tough to agree with God on everything? You want to water it down here, shake it a little here, leaven it all a little here, drop the bar a little. Hmm, but that's not covenant. Now, the word covenant comes from uh, the Hebrew word bereth, bereth, meaning alliance, pledge. Bereth, and I got this from the internet, bereth is derived from a root which means to cut. And hence, a covenant is a cutting, Lord have mercy, with reference to the cutting or dividing of animals into two parts and the contracting parties passing between them in making a covenant. A covenant is a strong, solemn, and specific agreement that God makes with mankind that secures mankind to God's will if mankind is obedient to the covenant. Glory be to God. Let me step back and say something here. If you attend a church and they read in God's word where he said, do not do that, and your church says, well, it's all right if we do that because actually God meant something else. You are not in covenant with God. Mm. Perfect God. <sighs> A covenant is a contract between a perfect God and imperfect humanity that, if kept by humanity, brings them in alignment with the perfect will of God. A covenant is God giving generations his God word of promise and perfection. Uh, just as in a man-made covenant, 
There are rules and there are consequences of breaking uh, those rules as it pertains to God's covenant. You would think, hmm, why would we break God's rules which are best for us? Yet, when you look at the willful, independent nature of humanity, you see that mankind is apt to go astray and break covenant. God's covenant covers. <laughs> Yet, mankind will make a move and become uncovered. Come on, somebody. God's covenant cautions. Yet, mankind will take the risk and break God's rules. God's covenant continues, yet mankind will place their next generation at a deficit by ignoring God's laws. Mm. Come on, you're seeing it, most of you, some of you, on, eh, not this crew maybe, but listen, I've been sent to three videos, you know, the fighting. But my dad would have, they've got a heavy hand. It would take one hit. I, would I wouldn't even go to home for five years after that. <laughs> Mama got a commanding voice. Oh, she would have to do, and she wouldn't, she wouldn't meet me on Queen Street. She would be somewhere around Victoria Street and cry out to me on Queen Street. And all I would do is have to hear her once, and I'd be like, oh, Lord. But can I tell you, when we break away from God's covenant, when mama and daddy no longer are instilling godly fear and godly reverence in the lives of the children, that those children are going to show you who they are. And listen, they are no, help me, Holy Ghost, they are no different, absolutely no different than you and I, except we are walking in covenant. We're trying but for the grace of God, there go I. The pastor, what's, what's, what's the resolve? We've got to return to God. Come on, mama, daddy. Come on, grandpa, grandma, nana, papa. Give the children an opportunity to experience covenant relationship. Listen, church. God is forever offering mankind the olive branch of the covenant, providing hope for a people who are prone to wonder. It's a natural thing, folks. Uh, there is a fact and truth that cannot be debated or denied. That is, God is perfect. You hear me? God is perfect. God, it's not that he won't. God cannot make a mistake. Church, when you truly get it, that God cannot make a mistake, then you will lean not unto your own understanding and you will place your full trust in God and live your life according to the precepts and promises of the word of God. Here is what I want to say at this point. God is not struggling to keep covenant. Come on, somebody. It is mankind who have the issue. We have the issue. Hence, while a perfect God stands on his perfect word, mankind seeks to change God's word and thereby seeks to cause a lofty God to come low and become subject to humanity. If God did that, he would not be God. Well, that can never be God, it's Elohim. He is creator, the creator, and the creature will not have reign or rule over the sovereign God. Church, what we must understand is that God will never go back on his covenant, and that despite man's best efforts to break God's covenant, God will always have a remnant people or a remnant person Woo. with which to establish his covenant. God's will will be done. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying you. I'm saying that no matter how dark it gets in Bermuda, no matter how violent it gets in Bermuda, no matter how devastatingly dark it gets in the world, God always has Genesis. 
out of the darkness, I'll speak forth light. And he'll always connect. Do I have anybody here who can say, uh, uh, God, you can connect with me. God, I am a part of the remnant. God, when everybody else says no, when everybody else says go, when everybody else says, well, it don't matter. God, I still say that I'm standing on your word. Every precept, every jot and tittle, my God, your word never changes. And so I'm standing on your word. If, if that's you, if that's you, if that's you, let me tell you. <laughs> You are in covenant with God. You got to be a hard-headed somebody that while churches are shifting and changing, come on, huh? A Catholic, come on, huh? we, we've seen church go through some changes. Huh? We, we've seen the look change, the sound change, everything change. But we've still got to stand on God's holy word. I'm going to help you some more. All right, all right. So let's understand the Noahic covenant today as it pertains to this text as we look at the following three points point number one carnality the breakdown carnality the breakdown point number two construction the building construction the building and then point number three Covenant, the beginning. Covenant, the beginning. Let's look at it. Point number one, carnality, the breakdown. It is quite something to think that mankind in covenant with God will end up moving away from the covenant relationship and actually breaking the covenant relationship. Yet the beauty is that because God established it, that God keeps covenant, watch this, with himself. How about she? He's so God. He said, I'll swear by no name. By my, uh, it's just myself and I. Uh, yea and amen. In, in other words, this thing is so rich. And if you get it, you never leave God. God says that I never change my mind about what I say it. As a matter of fact, I don't look to come in agreement with mankind. I agree with myself because myself, me, myself, and I are perfect. We're unchanging. And so he keeps covenant with himself. And God will see to it that before time turns into eternity, that mankind are one more time in covenant with him as they should be. Come on now. This is why. Follow it. This is why God did not let mankind die out of covenant. Woo! We're about to go into it, folks. This is, he didn't let them die out of covenant. No, no, no. God always had with himself someone with whom he will continue the covenant through to the next generation and generations to come. Let me read verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, uh, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. They were multiplying. That is right. They were obeying the command to multiply. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> they were not multiplying right. They were doing it their way. They were multiplying unequally yoked. This is the essence of the text. God's reason for us to multiply is to have perpetual generations worshiping him. So, so, so Peter and Maria should have children that know how to worship. Lord, have mercy. Didn't we see one worshiping today? The youngest of the crew, the only one left? Lord knows, I know how long, just left, just left. <laughs> but to, to understand, this is why you had her. I thought I had her just be, no, actually, I knew God told me to have this next child. 
yet to see hope. How to battle speak, can I say, and I hope I'm not embarrassing you to say it, your greatest moments of worship are yet to come. Because when you see your seed, what? Yeah. The next seed. Come on, yeah. Ashley and Kazia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, day, the day you see them back singing, and right, you won't be able to hold your key either. Come on, somebody. Come on. Do I got any more out there? That, let me see Jermaine return. Come on. Let me see T.I. return. Come on. Let me see Alshe, Kishay, Shante. Come on. Let me see them return to the house. Keonje, come on. Let me see them return like we know they can. Oh, there's going to be a praise. There's going to be a worship. Deaconess De Silva, your daughter. My God, Shatane, God. Let me see. What? This is why God said it's going to be perpetual so that your joy will be full. Your joy will be full. My joy, your joy, going to be full. Glory to God. Glory to God. Because why? You got to see it. We get older. But when we see the strength of our loins, praising and worshiping, come on now. You say, there I go, there I go. And God, if I go via the grave, there I go. I know that it's perpetual. I know that the covenant, the covenant did not stop with mama and daddy, but it's, it carries on with the children. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sheba, yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 perpetual generations. Anything outside of that is going to be trouble. That's why Bermuda's in trouble. Where are the perpetual generations? Come on, Grandma. Come on, Nana, Pa, Great Ma, Great Grandma, Great Grandpa. If God and the church was good enough for you, what happened? See, see, see? And you think there'll be no fallout in Bermuda? 20 miles? All right, all right, all right. So let me say that even today we are walking out of covenant when it comes to how we multiply. Listen, listen to the Holy Spirit. We multiply out of lust and not in love. Mm. We multiply out of a personal need and not a purposeful need. See how it's different? We multiply to have children and not to begin a family. Come on, somebody. You think we got to start with the right idea? They all ain't going to work out. All the marriages ain't going to work out in my family or your family. But my God, can we start it right? Why we got to start where you know at three months pregnant? I ain't worried about him no more. I'm not, what? Now we're few people, we're few people. I'm gonna put it out there. <laughs> that that uh, it's a family no matter what. It's a family, but it, it is what? Because that's not what God had planned. Come on now. We multiply because we want to and not because we wed to. Mm-hmm. I'm the difference. <sighs> We multiply creating a child out of wedlock and not to lock the child in the safety of the institution of marriage. Why? Why are we multiplying? That's all. Why are we multiplying? Okay. I have lived long enough to, to now see single parenthood celebrated and highlighted as the way to go. It's like if you listen to it, follow it, it's like, hey, marriage is out of style. You don't need that no more. Yeah, we got gender reveal. We got, I want a family reveal. Uh, by the way, this means that I have lived long enough. Watch this now. Watch this. I have lived long enough to see men become a sperm donor, a seed supplier, and a sex tool. Men have been subjugated to a means by which to obtain a child rather than a means by which to raise a child together in godly love. Well, I must hold up the covenant of marriage and state that I believe in God's original plan. That's, that's all I'm saying. Plans go astray, I can tell you that. 
But I still, listen, just because one marriage failed doesn't mean I get to step outside of God's original plan. I'm like, get back on track. I, I still believe. For anything outside of God's plan breaks his covenant with mankind. Verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This is the main thing you must understand. The wickedness of man was great. That word wickedness comes from uh, the Hebrew word ra meaning evil, distress, misery, injury, calamity, mischief, hurt, harm, adversity. Well, that sounds like today. And then imagination, imagination, coming from the word ye, sir. And of course, when I read it this morning, I didn't see it on Friday. When I read it this morning, I said, that's yeast. Mm-hmm. That's just a little bit of something. Then it grows. Watch out for the yeast. Watch out for the yeast. Conception, that's all. <laughs> uh, that is purpose, frame, being framed, imagination, mind, work. Church, once again, we are here. Mankind does whatever they imagine themselves doing, right, wrong, evil, good, blasphemy, honorable, despicable. They just do whatever they the dangers are when the imagination takes a nation out of the path of the destination that God has already ordained. Anything outside of God is not ordained or sanctioned or permitted by him, and therefore it cuts against the covenant of God. This is the bloodshed. This is the bloodshed of the breaking of a covenant. This is when there is innocent blood shed. For example, the major and horrific issue of abortion. And this is wickedness. It is directly coming against God's plan of, watch this, successive generations calling upon his name and worshiping him. You think God's happy with that? I want to make it clear that anything that causes innocent blood to flow comes against the covenant of God. That's why slavery was and is not of God. It was not and it is not of God. Rape is not of God. Murder is not of God and the like. It sheds innocent blood and comes against the covenant. The carnality of mankind has given way to mankind walking out of the way and out of the will of God. Mankind walks the broad way of life rather than the narrow way. It got to such a point, what about Noah's day? It got to such a point that God said, no. No way, no more. That's what God said. No way, no more. Oh, there's coming another day. <laughs> hey, when it's going to say it for, <laughs> all right, we, we will stay with Noah. But there's coming another day. Verse 6, look at it. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. When humanity do not worship God and serve him only, God's heart is grieved. The grieving is so profound that God doesn't even want to redo. We're not doing a redo. I'm not taking you and giving you a makeover. No. We'll just wipe them out. I'm listening. I need somebody to get this. Okay, all right. Catch this. Catch this. What we see here, we're going to talk about it, is God's grace and mercy stepping in. But there is coming a day. There ain't no be no grace and no mercy stepping in. And he will wipe up. That's why we're going to make our calling and election sure. All right. So God, God firstly, like, mm, he wants to destroy. Destroy is heavy. For when something is destroyed, it will never be able to function as it was previously designed to function. God wanted to destroy mankind. Part of this was because as mankind destroyed each other, they also destroyed what was around them. God wanted to wipe out the whole earth. Why? Because when men kill each other, and, and then they kill the plants, and they kill the vegetation. 
I get scared sometimes when I'm cooking for my vegan child. I'm like, don't tell me it's going to come a day when I'm not going to be having, having, having their meat. I got to go through all this all the time. I mean, I can cook a vegan meal. I'm like, I, once in a while, I'm going to have a chicken, a lamb, something. <laughs> but we destroy, right? They tell me in Africa, oh, Lord, I want to go. That, that, that the elephant population has risen, right? Because mankind are not there. They ain't all traveling there to kill them. I'm trying to tell you that God said, listen, God said, mankind is wicked. That means everything that they touch, everything that they take care of is eventually going to go bad. So he says, rather than me trying to fix it, I'm going to wipe everything off. Come on, I need you to get it. I think you are all right. Verse 7, and the Lord said, I will, here it is, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beasts, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Understand that mankind was the highest creation. Follow me. Therefore, any creation below mankind was not a worthy covenant partner. God made covenant with mankind, okay? <laughs> there would never be a cat, dog, red whale, palm tree, shrub, or any such thing that was of the order or high estate to connect with God in such a way that mankind did. Recall those things that were good. However, when uh, God created mankind, he called it very good. So God's like, I'm wiping them out. Ain't no sense to save any cockroaches. <laughs> Ain't no sense saving anything. Because I don't have covenant with them. I don't care about them that way. Ain't no dogs in heaven. Your dog that died ain't going to heaven. Okay, I'm going to hurt somebody. I better leave that alone. I better leave that alone, Deacon Stephen. I just felt people just went, ooh, that's not of God. <laughs> Pastor, give a rethink. Study the word somewhere. I said your dog and your cat. <laughs> all right. You think all those chickens we, we eat, uh, they're going to heaven? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Listen, if they did go to heaven, I'm going to work real hard because I ain't going to be no laborer like that in heaven. I'm telling you, I'm going to be a giant. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Woo! <laughs> so all this is going on. God totally ready to destroy everything. Verse 8, but, there you go, there you go, Woo. but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I, I loved this verse as I meditated on it. Church, listen, it's not that Noah was perfect or that Noah had raised perfect children. Yeah. Not at all. As I thought on it, I got it, I got it. The key information you need to understand is that God was not going to fail. He had made a covenant. He said, I can't, yeah. After being ticked off, you know how we get, you know, we look at our children. I've looked at my children, I said, Lord, have mercy. Mm. If that child didn't look so much like me, I would like take me back to the delivery room and let me get the fingerprints. But the child looks, mm. Mm. <laughs> I said, that can't be my child making that being that dumb. <laughs> Am I the only parent? I'm like, ooh, wee. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so God, God looks at Noah and says, okay, all right, all right. In you, I'm going to apply my grace. All right? See, you don't need grace if you're perfect. I need grace. Jesus. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're going to get it. And so I got it. God was not going to fail. He repented. He felt like going back on his creation. However, uh, there was one thing that prevented him from doing so. You may ask, what? <laughs> well, God's word is his bond. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he already spoke it. 
God created mankind with a purpose, and he was not, God can't fail, he was not going to fail in his covenant relationship in spite of the horrible state of mankind. That's why God was looking for someone to bestow grace upon. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. In other words, Noah, you couldn't even earn it. You were just the closest token that I could use. Come on, somebody. See, we wonder why afterwards, I can't talk on it today, he goes wrong because he was never all right. Ow. Noah did not earn it. Noah's goodness could not earn it. God looked upon Noah and found hope and possibilities in him. Noah was among the rebellious people, and yet Noah was not conforming to the ways of those around him. Listen to me. God will notice you when you are not like everybody else. Hey! Oh. Oh. <laughs> God will notice you when you refuse to simply go along with the crowd. <laughs> I never, I remember walking to school. I can't, the, all the children called this girl by a bad, bad name, called her Bubble Lips. Bubble Lips. I, that's what they called her. I'll never forget. We walked through the tracks. And everybody, nobody would walk with her. But one day, I walked along to her. I said, I'll be your friend. I'm only like eight, seven, eight years old. And, and I saw her like 25 years ago, she came out of the bank, right, right back to my childhood. And I said, hi, oh, you remember? She said, yes, I do. I said, well, it's good to see you. You know, just had a, not a 30 second conversation, but it reminded me, Maria, you've always taken that way. Nobody else wanted to be our friend. I'll be your friend. Huh? The children of Sunshine League got one of my girls, Rhea. She's away. She sometimes would come in on a song in the night back, back where we had it every night. I, I would go up Sunshine League. And you know what? It made me grateful that I had a hum. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on now. There, there, there's something. Watch it. This is what I'm saying. When you, when you understand, it's good to be me. I don't have to do what everybody else does. I don't have to conform to what everyone else is doing. God, I want to be honest. God, I want to just be, I just got to be me. I just want to be me. Hmm? God will notice you when you hear, he, hear differently than others. Don't be afraid to hear differently than somebody else. This tells me that when you are this type of a person, that you too will find grace, Oh. God, when you're going through hard times, come on, when you're going through struggling times, you yet can praise God, you hear different, because there are a whole pile of Christians, definitely sinners, who, who, who go in through a hard time, they don't have a praise on their lips, they don't have a clap with their hands, they don't have a, a, a song in their heart, but there's something about the covenant keeping child of God, that no matter what you're going through, that you remember whose you are, that you, yeah, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. You're a different type of gal. You're a different type of guy. You've been brought up to understand that the road may get rough, the going may get tough, the hills may get hard to climb. But you said, you know what? I started out a long time ago, and there is no doubt in my mind. I decided to make Jesus my choice. See, when you're that type of a person, you hear different. My God, some of you, look at you seniors. Uh, uh, you can't even keep yourself. I was like, how am I going to have these seniors behave themselves? They're acting up already. But when a senior, a super senior, knows that they have been kept out of the house of God, out of Mount Zion, out of the congregation of the righteous, and they get an opportunity, they don't go slow. They don't go quiet. They are not reserved, but they lift up their voice. They lift up their mouths. They walk up and down. They give God praise. Why? Because they hear different. And they understand when the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm going to give him praise. This might be. The last time ever we could praise and sing together. So I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to worship.
worship. So you see, that's a covenant keeper right there. There's somebody that still has their hand in the hand of the Lord. I'm oh God, I've got to hold to his hand. That, 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 that's who you are. God's, I just got to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. All right. You just old behave yourselves, Pastor mm. Mm. I ain't trying to get you riled up. I walked in church, they were riled up. Brother Jordan, they acting up as soon as I saw them. I was like, how are we going to keep masks on these lot? <laughs> how are we going to keep them still? Already screaming. I had to tell them, listen, when the, when the band plays, y'all be shushing now. Y'all be quiet. No, you, don't you, aren't you act up too much? But can we get a praise moment on? <laughs> oh, I love God. I love his house. I love his presence. I love to give him glory. <laughs> I love to honor his name. He's my God. He's my Lord. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied every groan. Yes, he did. Long as I live and troubles rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Oh, that's why I praise him. That's why I praise him. That's why I glorify the Lord my God. That's why I praise him. That's why I worship him. He's my Lord and soon coming King. Put your heads together. See, that's different. I, I, I just have a thought. I have a thought. If, if God is, and I believe that he is, Jesus' eyes are looking in the church. Could he find any worshipers in Shekinah? Could he find anybody like Noah? They're a bit different. They're not like every church. They're not like every congregation. They understand even if they got to just praise them in their spot. My God, mask on. That they're still going to give God praise. Give God, give God, give God praise. Can God find you? Would you stand out in the crowd. Would people, watch this now, be complaining about you? Ah, run on, run on, run on, run on. Give God praise, give God glory. God is worthy, he's worthy to be praised. We honor him, my God, we honor him. With every breath that we breathe, with every step that we take, he's worthy. Oh. different. Matter of fact, I'm old enough to remember Opera House. Anything that made us so attractive was that we were different. People would have church and they'll come to church at Opera House. I was so young though it scared me and I would cry, but it was different. Now I'm older and I, hey, that's my overflow. <laughs> now I'm older and I recognize the difference it made. Can I tell you, hallelujah, that if we want Bermuda, I'm going to say this purpose for the meaning of the word, if we want Bermuda to find rest, we got to get back to Pentecost. They, got, they have to see a Noahic church. A church. Yes, I climbed the walls, walked the back of the chairs, all that up the ramp and down the ramp. Yeah. That was the beat. My, 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 my. Soon, soon, soon as I heard that at age 9, 10, 11, hit it again. That made, that made little Maria sit down. It's going to be a spell. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> oh, church. I want to find a church. I want to be a part of a church that don't mind taking a praise break 
right in the middle of a sermon that don't mind giving God all praise, honor, and glory, that don't mind lifting up their voice and dictating a message to God that, God, I love you. God, I praise you. God, I worship you. God, I adore you. God, you are my love. God, you are my life. My, 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 my. Just that different. So just that different. Hmm? So in a whole world, his eye is looking for the one who has not conformed to the world. Yeah. So this is the type of person. If you're this type of person, that's when you find grace. Grace is when you're going through. You don't need favor when everything is going your way. You need favor when it seems like nothing. Come on, somebody. And so the Bible says that Noah, watch this, found grace. Now the word Noah, his name means rest. Hmm. I, I, I went out with a couple of friends on Friday night, and I saw young people who are restless. Haba shekete. I'm looking at a restless society. Now I saw the biblical unfold, and where it's like seven women and one man exposing themselves enough to hope to be the one out of the seven that catches one. Because they haven't found rest. You see, God would use the rest of Noah, how settled he was in comparison to the unrest of the world, in order to connect with mankind and allow the covenant to continue. He looked all over and found one person. What kind of world was that? 12 and 13, and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. I'm taking out the earth and them, that's it. Now, interesting point here, watch this. If God takes out the earth, mankind is done because mankind came from the, all right. So while God was going to destroy a broken world, because of Noah, we have point number two, construction, the building. 14, verse 14, make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. I want you to consider the favor of God towards Noah in this verse. Here, God gives architectural instruction to a man to build something that has never been built for a reason that has never existed before. You gotta get that. Rain? What rain? Never seen rain before. <laughs> Yet the favor of God causes you to attain the mind of God. No. To bring forth that which has not been seen before. See, all you got to do is get in the mind of God. Then all of a sudden, what you thought was full crazy starts to make sense. Ah, I ain't expecting everybody to understand me because I God mind of God. I go places. <laughs> Listen, while others may call you a fool, God is using you to fuel his plan for mankind and their return to him. While others may think you are crazy, they don't understand that you crave to do that which God speaks to you. While others may think that you have lost your mind, they don't understand that you have the mind of God concerning matters. Noah built an ark, might I say, therefore, uh, that Noah built the initial, watch this, ark of the covenant. Uh-huh, uh-huh. For this ark 
would be God permitting his covenant to continue in spite of the horrible state of mankind. And let me say here that God's estates will always outlast the state of mankind. You know, mankind thinks they're bright and brilliant. They think they can get rid of God, they can replace God, they can get rid of prayer. They think they can do all of that. Can I tell you that if they took prayer out of every school, there would be so much uh, 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 silent prayer going on before school prayer. I'm just trying to tell you, you cannot stop the plan of God. Why Noah? He was different. Hmm. You cannot be like the world and expect God to use you for his glory. We continue to downplay holiness when God has told us that without holiness, you will never see him, a holy God. What he said. Verse 17, and behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. You know, don't tell me God is so loving that he would never, what? He gave us a preview how close he went. But he knew that Jesus was to come. He said, okay, I'm just trying to tell you, God is love. And yeah, he is. He's also consequences. <laughs> so please note that in the beginning, God breathed into mankind the breath of life. Therefore, it is God's breath mm, to receive back to himself at an appointed time. Oh, have mercy. This time here is an appointed time of total destruction. God had seen enough, and what he saw, he decided that he would no longer give breath to. Abby thought, folks, this day is yet fast approaching once again. We're not there yet. <laughs> yet we have in the Bible, Brother Noah, point number three, covenant, the beginning. Verse 18, key verse. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives and thee. See, that's why it's the ark of the covenant. I'm establishing my covenant with Noah. Noah go in the ark, the ark of the covenant. Okay? So this is our key verse for the day. In spite of all the evil and the wickedness prevailing in the world, God found Noah. Therefore, God gave Noah special instructions to save his life. Now, since this is a covenant, it could not be just Noah. This is it, folks. You get this, you then understand the alphabet and why they're doing what they do. All right? So watch, pay attention. It could not be just Noah. Noah going the ark, right? God, in the beginning, created he, them. Woo! Male and female. <laughs> <laughs> this means that in the beginning, the new again, God will use the very same pattern. Come on, somebody. I'm breaking it down. Come on. <laughs> it's God's pattern. It's God's world. What? It is God's only permitted way of continuing the existence of humanity. So, watch this, in that ark, there was not one male that did not have a female counterpart. <laughs> the beautiful thing is, is that when mankind lines up, the animals lined up. You ever wonder why? Mm, this is Holy Ghost. This is fresh. You all catch it. You ever wonder why the, the giraffes, the tigers, the lions, the bears, they all just came in? Because God was setting up a new order, and if mankind were obedient, the rest of creation would be obedient. Okay? Even
even the animals came in two by two. Male and female. Wow. Anything, anything outside of male and female does not have God's approval and does not meet his standard. That's it. I'm sorry. I love you. I want you to repent. I want you to go to heaven. But I'm telling you, if you don't have the belief, the understanding of male and female, that's it, then you are outside of God's covenant and God will destroy you in the end. Get in the ark of safety while you can. And so they'll never, they'll never meet God's standards. They may meet man's standards. They may meet the court standards. That's still man, you know. The magistrate, I don't care how many weeks he has. He ain't God. Come on up. What? You can get a QC, a PC, a RC. I don't care. They are still not God. I would advise those of us that call ourselves Christians to model our lives and walk after the word of God and not the word of a man. I don't care how educated he is. He just educated himself out of the will of God. It will never meet God's standards. Point to note also is that at this point, Noah, watch this, had the respect of his wife and his children. I did not say that they necessarily understood him. They didn't respect him enough to obey. And that's what children are supposed to do. I ain't expecting none of no, Listen, it ain't until they try married, are married, get older, that they're like, you know what, my mind think you was right. I know I was right. But do you think I'm going to try to come into agreement with a preteen or a teenager? I've lived a little bit longer than them. Why are we trying to rationalize with minds that are not mature? They haven't lived a day. People trying to tell me as a pastor to do. They're in their 20s. I've been married 36 years. Guess who I'm going to listen to? And so the job of a child is obey. Obey your parents, for this is right, watch this, in the... See, so if your parents tell you jump off a cliff, your parents tell you smoke ganja, they ain't right in the Lord. See, okay, all right, see me. So Noah's children weren't perfect. We learned that later. We ain't getting there. But they obeyed their father. Right. Why Noah? Noah was the head of a household that would obey the command of God. Why Noah? Noah was conforming to the way and will of God. Why Noah? God knew the heart of Noah. He didn't say he knew the heart of Ham, Sham, and any rest of the Ham. <laughs> Sometimes people look for a pastor to be in agreement with everybody. Can I tell you, I just got to be in agreement with God? Yeah. That's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> he knew the heart of Noah, and God blessed Noah with the grace to do what he did. Get that? How are you building a, 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 a thing that you've never seen before? You ain't even got an architectural agreement for rain that ain't never fallen before. It's lucky that Maui weren't around. They would have called the police, had them arrested and tied up in a white coat and taken away. What? But can I tell you, he just kept on building. All right, all right. So listen, grace, 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 grace. All I need is more grace. More grace, more grace. Grace when they persecute you. Grace when, okay, no, 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 don't do that. That's an old song. <laughs> That's an old, I forgot most of the words. I'll definitely be making them up. Listen, it takes grace to be blasted and ridiculed and still build what God set to build. Come on, come on. You think I will be here, we will be here today? If I look for the favor from man? 
Verse 19, verses 19 through 21. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sword shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be what? Male and female. Of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come. Two. They've got to be different. They've got to be different because reproduction. <sighs> All right, see. <sighs> two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Now, church, I do not care what the world permits. You must always follow the plan and purpose of God. We owe our breath to God, and therefore we owe the life we live to God. Verse 22, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. A learned verse, really. Thus did Noah. God, you said it, and therefore that is what I will do. What? No questions. I, I won't debate you. I won't negate you. I won't frustrate you. I will obey. Lord have mercy. Ooh. It was a command. Just do it. Why do we waste time as if we can ever prove God wrong in what he commands us to do? Just do it. Noah did it all. He heard God and he obeyed God. The blessing is not in who you are. The blessing in keeping covenant is that you must realize that the writer of the document is God. And God knows what is right. Therefore, if you are going to be in covenant relationship with God, you must obey. Why Noah? Because he lived in such a way that he found grace, unmerited favor in the sight of God direct. Do not look to do anything but what God has created you to do. Man, God created you to right. Women, God created you to right. Now, you may never get married, but at least you're looking to it. Stay in the will of God and God's grace. Grace, grace, grace. God's grace will find you. God's grace will find you. Church, the Bible has been written aforetime that we through patience and comfort in the scriptures might have hope. Our hope is in the Lord. Our hope is in his word. Somebody needs hope today. Somebody, you're restless. Come on. You, you want to find rest? Rest for your weary soul. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of women? I mean, I guess since the curfew is lifted, they're just going full crazy. What I saw, I was like, really? Aren't you tired of running every weekend? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just running, 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 running. You need rest. This world, this world system will not give you rest, though you can have rest while you're in the world. Be in the world, but not of the world. If not 10 years later, 20 years later, should the Lord tarry, you're still going to be restless. I looked at somebody my sister's age, and on Friday I said, they ain't tired yet. They ain't tired of liquor, the liquor, and the smoking yet. Then they heard the gun bang. It was a scene. I tried to capture the gun bears, but all the other things got in the way. I said, oh, Lord, I can't show this. I appreciate me the gum base. We have restless people in our families. I said, we. Can we tell them about Noah this week? How he lived in a world worse than today? You got to look at it in the context of the time. It was worse. 
if this world was where his world is in context of the time, rapture would have happened by now. It ain't, it ain't, we, ain't, we are not there yet. Yet the time is coming, and I want you to make heaven your home before it's eternally too late. I want you to get into the ark of the covenant, uh, the place of safety, so that when this world is destroyed, you are already tucked safe in the presence of God. The breath that we breathe is not us, it's load. And there is an appointed time when God will say, I want it back. And before we get to that place, why not live our life? The an why give the devil the energy of our youth, the energy of our creativity? Time you come into the house, you are a thousand years old, and you now just have to sit back and admire. Give him your youth so that when you become a super senior, you can say, look at the generations of what I started. Mama House, you are my Sunday school superintendent. That's 40 plus years ago. And now you are sitting as close as you can to little Maria, who is now your pastor. You get to say, look at the generations. Yet someone is not safe today, and I need to offer you Jesus. Ran into a student, or I should say the student called me out. He said, I saw you, Miss Seam. I said, I got to come say hi. Say, look at you. I knew that was a good sign. He didn't go, look at you. He said, look at you. And we had a conversation. Now, he may not know, but I know he was up to shenanigans when he got a phone call. But he said, I'm, I, I see you. I see you more often than you think. I told him, I said, I called, I talked about my school students coming in. I did last week, Sunday. And one of them gave their heart to the Lord this week, that's LaShante Wilson. I said, I want my students come in. What a crew that would be. Oh my Lord, did they have this place hopping and skipping? <laughs> So students of Mrs. Sim, and if you don't have a church home, if you're not a Christian, what are you waiting for? Make Jesus your choice. Come on, sin a man, sin a woman. It's easy. All you've got to do is call on the name of Jesus for yourself. If, the, if that's you, I want you to repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I thank you for today. I thank you for today. God, I am a sinner. God, I am a sinner. I believe God. I believe God. That you sent your son Jesus Christ. That you sent your son Jesus Christ. To die for my sins. To die for my sins. I receive Jesus today. I receive Jesus today. I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Jesus come into my heart. Jesus come into my heart. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For accepting me. For accepting me. Into your family. Into your family. And now. And now. I can say. I can say. That heaven is mine. That heaven is mine. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, if that's you, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. You need a church home. You need a place where the word of God is taught in a responsible way with the sobriety that it requires. I want you to reach out to us. I got two fern numbers. Call us, call us. You need prayer? Call. What are you waiting for? Get ready. Get your cell phone ready. Take these numbers down. Two numbers. Area code 441. First number, 504-9235. 504-9235. Second number, 504-9235. Amen. Then if you want to reach out to me, question, meeting, let's do it. Here's my emails. Swim at logic.bm. Swim at logic.bm. Easy. There is no excuse. 
And as I keep on watching people just live their life carelessly, I'm like, why don't they want salvation? And my prayer is that the Holy Spirit is wooing you and that you are not a part of those that will be lost eternally. God is able. Those of us who are Christians, don't lose your passion. Make sure that when God looks in his holy place, when Jesus piercing eyes pierce and look into the church, and he looks directly on our hearts, that he sees somebody that wants to be here and wants to worship and loves him above everything. Let's be that church in Jesus' name.